Jacksonville has beaten Tennessee today in Nashville. Have you guys taken a hit with your confidence at this point? No, we, we know what we, who we are. Yeah, it's definitely not what we want to do, definitely not our standard and you know, where we hold ourselves to as a defense. Final score, Jacksonville 36, Tennessee 22. Tighten up! Welcome to the BetMGM studio and the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4 with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. As the Titans got back to work, something jumped out to me. You heard it in the open. Guys, resolute that disappointed by the three-game losing streak, but certainly not broken and not having their confidence broken. No. I mean, we're, we're there, you know, I mean, we're professional athletes and professional coaches, and we have a job to do. Uh, it's going to start by, you know, trying to eliminate bad football. That's been the message. That was the message Monday. Um, <clears throat> hopefully getting to the point where we're good enough to take advantage of another team's bad football. We, we didn't quite do that enough times uh, on Sunday. And so we, we have to, there's a lot of things we have to clean up. And, you know, I, I don't think that anything is broken. I think we have to just start playing a little cleaner. When you win games and I start to talk about positives, you admonish me and you say, now, wait a minute, we weren't perfect. We had some bad plays. When you don't win, you always say, hey, everything wasn't bad. We are going to focus on some of the positives. Why are you that way about both scenarios? Well, I just try to I think that the consistency in that message and, and trying to make sure that we coach the, the action and not necessarily the result. Uh, I'm very uh, firm in that belief as that saying, you know, there's the good, the bad, and the stuff that gets you beat. And, and we have to eliminate the stuff that gets you beat. Uh, we have to fix the bad, and we have to continue and enhance the, the good things that we did. And you know, I would say that that goes um, with, with every game that we play, whether we win or we lose. All right, let's take a look at some of the good things that the Titans did on Sunday. The Mike Vrabel six-pack starts with a touchdown. Powerful run by Derrick Henry, who had help. Yeah, it was a great end to the, to the drive. You know, we, we plunge it in there from the three-yard line. You can see the surge. Um, Guys are scoring with their men. We got offensive linemen in the end zone, which, which means that if they're in the end zone, that, that Derek is you know, not too far behind. So I thought that was a great cap um, to, to the drive there and is able to, to, to finish it off with a touchdown. Your offensive line <clears throat> got some knockback in the run game for a good bit of the contest. Yeah, I mean, we were able to run the ball uh, not only efficiently. There were some five, four and five and six yard runs in there. But also, we had some explosive runs as well. Ah, leading to this. Play number two, an explosive run. Derrick Henry with a 50-yarder. Yeah, well, you can see him, you know, not, not touched. And, you know, Nate's able to go around there and square the backer up. Um, receivers at the second level, you, you can see guys coming in, uh, getting blocks. I, I think you can see it here, but he's not touched. And there's Bobby Woods leading the way. Uh, Nick Westbrook coming in there from when, when Derek cuts back. You know, we always tell him we can't dictate where the ball is going to run. You just have to be ready uh, to, to get guys covered up and, and, and see what happens. Some of those runs are ones that definitely can go 80 yards. It could be a touchdown. And then some are openings where Derek has to make as much out of it as he possibly can. Really felt like he did that on that run. Yeah, I mean, that one was blocked pretty well. They're, they're, he, he cut back and... Um, you know, if we can get him to the second level, whatever decision he makes after that is on him. You know, he's the, he's the guy that has the, the football in his hand. So, you know, it was just good to get him able to get, get into the second level uh, untouched and let him decide where he's going to go from there. Titans second touchdown, outstanding effort by the quarterback Ryan Tannehill and also by Chiga Conquo, the recipient. Well, you know, I mean, there's protection. We're able to progress. They slough off and, and carry Dontrell into the end zone. You know, we, we were trying to get Dontrell there, but, you know, had also figured that, you know, he had had some action in the red zone that they may, you know, carry him. And so Ryan was checking 
Dontrell, and then you know having him be replaced there uh, underneath by Chig. Uh, Ryan got it to him in stride, and, and he was able to, to get into the end zone. Chick making things happen, but there is more from him that you want, right? Yeah, there's a lot more. You know, I mean, there's a lot more. Uh, again, you know, he has to do his part in the run game, or you know, whether we throw it out there on the perimeter and just some details. But you know, starting to show up, it just there's you know, it, there's more than just a stat sheet. All right, let's look at a defensive play. Bud Dupree helping the defense with three tackles for loss. Here's one. Well, Bud, you know, here is being aggressive and, and being able to get into the backfield. They're trying to pull and. You know, he's able to set the edge and, and finish there uh, on, on the running back, uh, be, being explosive and, and, and trying to play hard. Bud Dupree beating the blocker, and that's Travis Etienne, who had been running really well for this Jacksonville Jaguar team, but in the game on Sunday, 17 carries for 32 yards. Yeah, it wasn't much there in the run game. Unfortunately, we, we have to make sure that you know, we're doing a better job when they throw it. All right, let's look at a great individual effort by Nick Westbrook Akine late in the game to score a touchdown. Yep, Ryan took, takes a shot here, but, you know, Ryan kind of knew if he's not going to change the protection, you know, that one's going to be on him. And, you know, he's able to give a, a really nice ball to Nick. Uh, Nick's able to come down with it to contested catch. Um, and, and again, I liked how we battled back. I like how we finished that drive. And, you know, we had to. We didn't have any other choice. Uh, but just a great effort here by Nick to be able to finish in the corner of the end zone with, with contested catch there uh, as he's going to the ground and, and that ball survived the ground. As you say, sometimes you just have to win. Yeah, you have to. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups out All there. All right, this week. pretty good play by Chigar Conquo. We wanted to show the one-hand catch here on the two-point conversion. Take a look at this. Yeah, slip Chig back there in the, in the backfield and, you know, try to use his speed to outflank the defense, and, and he did, and Ryan went right to him, and, you know, kind of got on him a little quick, but, you know, he pinned it up there against his helmet and, and was able to get a two-pointer. Well done by Akakwo as he continues to move up the receiving charts and the scoring charts, scoring eight points in Sunday's game. That's the Mike Vrabel six-pack. When we come back to the BetMGM studio, we'll talk about Derrick Henry. He continues to do things on the field with 1,199 yards rushing. What he's doing off the field, just as impressive that's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. The Walter Payton Man of the Year Award is the NFL's most prestigious. Each team has their own Walter Payton winner, and he moves on to compete for the overall league award, which will be announced the Thursday before the Super Bowl. For the second year in a row, Titans running back Derrick Henry is the Tennessee Titans Man of the Year, and with good reason. So this week, he is our epic Western genuine Titan, as we show you about a simple ask and a big gift that Derrick Henry made happen. Overtime on the way in Baltimore. The whole country with us on the most important Sunday afternoon game in the AFC. The Titans were playing Baltimore at Baltimore, and I was supposed to be there, but I didn't because my dad ended up going into hospice. Justin Tucker just sent the game to overtime with a short 29-yard field goal with 15 seconds left in regulation. It wasn't on the TV in hospice, but it came on the TV after the game ended. You can play action here and get someone wide open, but you have Derrick Henry, right? And Derrick ran that ball in, in overtime and won the game. Henry getting free. Henry's going to end the game. Titans take it in overtime. And I told my dad, I was like, Derek did that for you. And he moved his hands. That was the moment that changed everything for my dad, was Derek taking those two seconds out of his day. My dad was diagnosed with cancer in 2015, and it was already stage four, so it was already in his bones. It's a rare form of cancer too. Um, there's nothing they could really do. Just one night I tweeted out to Derek and I just said, hey, like, what are the chances? Like, I could just have you say hi to my dad. And it just took off on Twitter. It's touched me, you know. They're devoted fans. And they're from, you know, the Jacksonville area. I tried to keep it a surprise for my dad, but I'm not very good at keeping surprises. I blurted out that Derek wants to meet you, and he was like, you're lying. 
didn't believe me. Something that, you know, I had to meet, meet the guy. Cancer sucks. You know, I hate cancer. All that leading up to the moment. He liked to take videos of himself talking. I don't know why. Appreciate it, Dustin. Also, there's supposed to be something else I'm supposed to do down here while I'm down here, so I don't know yet, but. I just remember his eyes lighting up a lot. Like, I didn't think I've seen that spark in his eyes in a while, so. I told him I'm praying for him. You know, it was great to meet him. You know, God bless him. I don't even know if he had the words. He just thought it was the coolest thing that he just met the best running back in the league. For Derek just to take two minutes out of his day, I think that's Derek with his daughter. I think that's Derek in general. He has a heart of gold. Forever in debt to Derek Henry for making my dad have one good day and a memory to last a lifetime and then a memory that he'll take with him. I was happy that you know I was able to do that for them, you know, for her dad, because I know she really wanted it, so. But I just, I hope he knows like how much that moment meant to my dad, my mom, my other sisters. Derek is a moment of joy for all of us. But Derek took that one moment for me and it, it meant everything. Hits you in the heart. Always does, man. I tell you what, that's our gentle giant. He is a uh, he is a warrior on the football field, but I have never seen him say no uh, to, to any anybody that was in need, whether that's in this building or in our community. And it is a joy uh, to be around and get to coach uh, Derek. Throughout the rest of the regular season, the Titans creative team is releasing new video every Tuesday and Thursday that showcase why Derrick Henry deserves to be the NFL Man of the Year. Those can be seen at TennesseeTitans.com as well as on our social media platforms. Of course, the NFL announces the Walter Payton Man of the Year on Thursday before the Super Bowl. Coming back, know your foe. We'll take a look at the Los Angeles Chargers when the Mike Vrabel Show continues, presented by Shift 4. We welcome you back to the Bet MGM studio. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4. It's time to know your foe. Bring them on, Mike. Let's go. Let's Come go on. right now. Right now. The Chargers right here. Pass, pass, pass. Pass. They're going to throw a lot. They're 7-6. and six. The game's at 325 Central Time at SoFi Stadium. Does it help that you were there last year? Well, I mean, I think we can, you know, understand that, you know, we don't have to go and do a tour and see where everything's at and right. see the big old screen up top. But, you know, the surroundings are going to be familiar. Um, but, but the foe is going to be different. Yes, the foe is very different because they throw a lot. Justin Herbert, the quarterback, he's pretty good. He's thrown for more yards than any player in NFL history in his first three seasons. Yep, that does not surprise me. What, 12,000-some? Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And he, they, they threw 51 times on Sunday night in beating Miami, and I guess that's about what you and, would expect. And he keeps it out of harm's way. You know, he's got great arm talent. He can throw from in the pocket, you know, through for 150 yards outside the pocket. Um, this will be the, the most versatile back and most utilized back that, you know, we, we've seen. Got receivers with, with good size. They've got some with some quickness and some speed. Uh, they use their tight ends, great pocket presence right there, slipping up, avoiding the rush, keeping his eyes downfield. Uh, Keenan Allen's back. Mike Williams is a big target. A um, lot of screens, you know, just they hit the backs and, you know, he seems to be in command. Here he is again outside the pocket, throwing the ball back. Um, you know, pinpoint accuracy to Mike Williams on a boot throwback. And he can run too, Herbert. Yeah, if he has to. I mean, he went one last year. I think he beat somebody over, you know, he went for over 100 yards. They kept playing, you know, two high safeties, man, turn their backs, and he kept scrambling and, and pretty much won that game for him. All right, let's take a look at some defense. Start with Drew Tranquil, Derwin James. They certainly have some guys who can come up and hit and make things happen. And they also have Khalil Mack, for whom – they made a trade uh, with Chicago to get him. He's got seven sacks on the year, and he's held them together. Yeah, and, and I know that with the injury to Bosa, Khalil Mack has been been able to step in 
you know, Drew Qu uh, Tranquil's all over the place. Um, Murray, and obviously uh, Van Noy. Up front, inside, they've had a, some injuries. Corners are playing well. Asante Samuel Jr., uh, Davis, you know, th those guys are playing well. Derwin James, you mentioned, um, and Adderley. So, bottom line is, they throw a lot, they have talent on defense, and the Chargers are playing well right now. Yeah, and it's a huge challenge. We'll have to be prepared to go on the road. And, you know, they're plus four and a turnover margin. And, you know, after last week, we're, we're, we're behind. Yeah. All right, when we come back, We'll meet a student who's making a real difference in the community. And later in the show, Mike Vrabel's keys to beating the Chargers. All that and more coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. I want to introduce you to Mackenzie Tuxen, 19-year-old student with Rett Syndrome. That's a genetic disorder which affects communication. Well, she's an advocate for equal and fair treatment for students in her school system. And because of that, Mackenzie is this week's Wesley Mortgage Community Hero. Dear Mackenzie, in 2009, you were diagnosed with Rett syndrome, a severe form of autism for females. The diagnosis stage, you wouldn't be able to walk, talk, you wouldn't be able to have personal hand movement, or you wouldn't be able to feed through a tube. Not only have you not let this define you, but you have used this as a gateway to advocate for others. Through that advocacy, you have helped change policies within the state legislation, as well as Metro National Public Schools. While in high school, Baby. you were able to help invent new and inclusive ways of being a class president, a varsity cheerleader, as well as becoming the first ever nonverbal ambassador for Metro Nashville Public Schools. Dad is so proud of you. You continue to amaze us. We are truly excited to go with you and watch you fulfill your life mission to educate others and give them other individuals a voice with disabilities. Lead on, Mackenzie. We love you, Mom and Dad. Mackenzie is just such a light. Her vibe, her energy just radiates effortlessly off Mackenzie. Um, she always greets you with a smile and a hug. Anybody who's around, and, and no matter what ability you have, no matter what barriers may be in your way, no matter what obstacles are in your way, she has helped show other teachers just how there's other ways to show that you're successful, that you're learning, and that you're doing all these things and enjoying your, getting your full high school experience. But it doesn't always have to be the cookie cutter way. Mackenzie is a great representation of a White Creek High School Please. cheerleader. She shows great spirit at every game. We want other students to see that just because you have a disability doesn't mean you can't do all the things. And she does all the things. My mission in life is to educate and give a voice to all individuals with disabilities. I do not want any individual to be afraid to be the first. I am thankful to be able to represent individuals with special needs. Tighten up. Time for the Nissan Keys to Success. Head Coach Mike Vrabel, I'm very interested in some wording in these keys. I have questions, so let's start looking. Let's hit some of these let's keys. Let's hit some of these keys. Run the ball with physicality and details. What does that mean? Well, details. they're going to give you different fronts. They're going to give you some different pressures. And if we can hit the details and still be physical and not be cautious and not wait and react, you know, if we got a pull play, just the first guy, you hit the first guy you see, second guy, you make it right, wrap or tuck it up, and then we got to get our runner, which obviously is Derek, um, you know, going. And, and we've, we've hit multiple schemes coming off the last game. We hit some zone schemes. We hit some inside zone, outside zone, and also we're able to hit some gap schemes uh, for, for some big yardage. Okay, key number two, affect Justin Herbert and Austin Eckler. How do you affect those guys? Well, there's only two ways. It's either, you know, being able to do it in, in the coverage or being able to get there quicker in a rush. And, you know, we have to have guys that can do a little bit of both. If the, if the coverage is helping the rush, the rush has got to get there. You know, we have to knock the ball out of the quarterback's hands. We have to hit them more than one time. Um, and, and that's, that's, that's it's, if we don't, you know, he's too accurate. He's got too good of arm talent. 
um, for us not to be able to, to affect them and, and hope that the, the outcome will be any different. Final key is about coverage. You've got to be good in kick and punt coverage. Are they good on the return game? Yeah, they're solid. And obviously, you know, th this is where I think you can send some messages, though. We're, you know, coming out of last week's game, you know, there was some, some good punt coverage, kickoff coverage. We got bailed out a little bit. But this is where you can send some messages, you know, to, to, with some speed and violence and really create some field position. All right. Titans and the Chargers, 325 this Sunday at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. For Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.